Hello designers! In this video, we're going to learn how to apply materials onto a 3D object in Blender. Now, this tutorial is going to be a little bit tricky to follow along, so I really recommend you take your time, you pause my video, you make sure you understand exactly what keys I'm pressing and the concepts that I'm talking about. Because applying materials in Blender or applying textures, it's a little bit tricky, uh, especially when we start talking about UV unwrapping and how it works. This video is going to be really quick and dirty. It's really the basics of UV unwrapping and adding materials. We're not going to go into like detailed things like marking seams, um, placement exactly of how you put the graphics on. This is just a quick and dirty method so that you can get your object having textures on top. In this case, the 3D model we're using is from our last video tutorial, 1.6, exporting from Onshape to Blender. So let's import that file again. File import Colada, and we'll get our car in. And as we learned from the other video, we scale up R90Z, let's place it right here. Okay, so our car is in the scene. I'm gonna apply all those transforms. And now we need to do a little bit of setup to get ready to texture this car. The first thing you're gonna do is come down here to the bottom and right here where these two windows connect, you'll see that the arrow changes shape. We're gonna click and drag this up. Now this is the default animation timeline, so if you're doing animations in Blender. But today we are going to be using UV unwrapping. So we can swap this space to look like another preset space by coming up here to the top left. I'm going to click this and I'm going to change it to UV editor. Okay, great. We're going to keep that there for a second. I'm just going to drag this down so it's a little bit smaller. And also, we need to remind ourselves where materials are added. Right here on the right panel, this little globe checker mark are the material properties for objects. So if I click this, you can see that our Collada file actually has some materials that came in from Onshape. Now, these are going to conflict with what we're doing today. We're doing a custom graphic or custom materials. So we want to remove as many of these materials as possible. So you might see me deleting materials later on in this tutorial video. For example, if I click right here, the main car body that came from Onshape, you can see how many materials appear. I am just going to come right here to the minus and delete all those materials to get this basic white material. There's no material applied right now. It's empty, as you can see right here. Another last thing we need to do is make sure that we're in the right view mode because when you add graphics or materials, you want to see what they look like in this viewport window. So we need to change to viewport shading or rendered view. Rendered view, there's no lights in the scene right now, so it looks kind of dark. So we can just use viewport shading or what we call a look dev. Do not use solid view because that won't show you the graphics when we're adding later. We're just going to go back to viewport shading. Okay, let's get started adding a graphic onto our car using UV unwrapping. The first thing we need to do is get a graphic. In my case, I'm just going to grab one from Google Images, but your graphic designer will design their own graphic perhaps, or you can just like me, grab it from the internet. Once I have my graphic downloaded to my computer, I'm going to click the part where I want to apply the graphic. So in this case, it's the body right here. You can see that it's highlighted in orange, the body. And we're going to come down here to the materials panel. And right here where it says new, we're going to add a new material. So take note that I removed the materials here before. So it's added a principled BSDF. I'm just going to rename this material UV livery because we're going to be selecting this material over and over later when we're starting to add materials to different parts of the car. We've added our material. It is a principled BSDF under base color. Instead of choosing a color like this, we are going to click this little yellow dot and we're going to choose image texture. So now it's turned black. It doesn't know what image we're talking about. So this is where you navigate on your computer by clicking open and find the file that has your graphic. So right here is my file. And now the graphic has been linked to the material of this car. But as you can see, nothing is happening. That is why we need to learn UV unwrapping. UV unwrapping basically takes all the faces of this object right now that's selected and lays them flat on a 2D plane. Kind of like opening a box and laying it flat to get the net template. 
And then Blender will understand how the graphics will overlay on that unwrapped flat image. I know it's a little bit confusing, but we're going to try it right now and you'll get an idea of what I'm doing. Before I unwrap, I'm just going to hide these tires by clicking and holding shift and clicking the other three and then pushing H on my keyboard to hide H. So they're hidden as well. I'm going to select the body. I'm going to push tab to go into edit mode and I'm going to push A to select all. With all the edges, vertexes, and faces selected for this part, I'm going to push the key U to unwrap. U. And I'm going to choose Smart UV Project. And let's see what happens. This box comes up, and your margin, island margin, might be 0.0. .0. We're going to add just a tiny bit of margin. So when it unwraps all the faces and edges, there's a gap between them. Let's click OK, and let's have a look at what came in on the UV editor. So navigating the UV editor is just like up here in the viewport. I'm going to hold Shift and middle mouse button to pan. As you can see, this is highlighted orange, so it's selected. I can G and move it around. Right now, it doesn't know what the image is in this UV editor to put on the background. So what I'm going to do is click Open right here and navigate to that same image we applied in the material. So here's the image that I downloaded from the internet, and here's the UV. And as I move this around, you can see what's happening in the viewport. Let me extend this so you can see what it is. I'm hovering over here, pushing G. You can see that the image is overlaying on top of the car. Let's rotate while hovering over here in the UV editor. You can rotate the graphic. So let's say I leave it like this, maybe scale it down a little bit. And I come up to the viewport and I click on the outside and then tab out. Look how I've overlaid the graphic onto the surface of the car. Now it's not perfect, it's not overlaying correctly the way I want it to, but this is how UV unwrapping basically works. So let's now try to project it properly in a better way so that the graphic actually overlays nicely over the car instead of getting all these broken graphics right here. How do you do that? Well, it's still selected. I'm gonna tab back into edit mode. You can only edit UV in edit mode, all right? So you have to jump into edit mode for it to appear in the UV. So right now you can't see anything. That's because I need to click A to select all, and then they appear again. I'm going to flip my view to top view by pushing Z right here on the navigation sphere. So I'm right here in the top view. I'm just going to pan this so you can see a bit better. And now, even though I've unwrapped this again, I can just unwrap, unwrap whenever I need to. So I'm going to push U here, and it will just reset the unwrap. And what I'm going to choose is Project from View instead of Smart UV. So let's do Project from View. And because I'm looking directly down on this object, it has projected what I see directly down. So now, hovering over the UV editor window, I can move this and it'll overlay much better. So let's scale this up. What I want is like some diagonal lines going across the front of the car. So let's place this in a nice position, maybe rotate a little bit, get those graphics. Now let's rotate here, see what it looks like. Okay, let's scale it down just a little bit. Seems like a lot of graphics happening. Rotate there, let's deselect up here, see what it looks like. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Let's play, let's keep playing around. So this is where you get a really fun experimental stage in your car. I think I liked it when it was like this. Notice how I always move the cursor hovering over the viewport I want to use shortcut keys for. So right now I'm going to push tab while the cursor's up here. Nice. Let me drag this window down so we can see what we've done so far. So we have a graphic overlaid on the car. And because it's a material, if we come back down here to the bottom right and scroll down, we can actually edit the graphics. I'm going to add, make it really metallic and really shiny by reducing the rough. We can play around with these settings. And now we've got a glossy look to this car graphic. What happens if you want to apply a UV not to the entire object, but maybe like this one small face here or inside this curve? Well, you can. You just got to tab into it. Let's say we want to change the color of this to red. I'm going to go to face select mode, the third one right here.
click one of these faces and I'm going to push L key for link or loop select. And it has selected all the faces that are adjoining the one that I selected. So now that this is selected, we can bring up our UV. And as you can see, it's right here. I want it all red, right? So I can use my image, scale this down, and just place this over the red part of the image. R for rotate. And now that part has become red. Let's do it for the other side as well. So I'm going to choose here, L. And then just hover over the UV, G to move, S to scale, R, G on the red. Because it's a flat color, I can place it anywhere on this red. It doesn't make a difference. Let's tab out and see how that looks. Yeah, pretty cool. Now you can UV unwrap other graphics or images. You can compound graphics and images. All you gotta do is always add new materials. Right now we have this material. If you wanted to add like, for example, a graphic of, I don't know, birds or clouds or fire, you just had to click this plus icon and make a new material like this, call it fire. And then as we did before, under base color, choose image texture, and then select the file on your computer that looks like fire. And you just UV unwrap like we just learned just now for that section from selecting it right here. Instead of red and black livery that like I'm using now, you just click the open and choose that file that you've downloaded for fire. I, I hope that makes sense. It does get a little bit tricky. Let's try UV unwrap on one of the wings right here. So I'm gonna choose this wing. Take note, I'm in object mode now, not edit mode. Now I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to bring my UV editor window up and I'm going to make sure that the materials, see the materials here from the on shape file are still here. I'm just going to minus these. Uh, you can't remove in edit mode. I have to come back out while it's selected. Minus, minus. Choose that material that we've made. So it's UV livery. And now it needs to know how to unwrap it. So we're going to tab into it, select a U and Smart UV. If you do Smart UV, I recommend you increase the island margin from zero to like 0 0.01. Okay, so let's scale this down. Um, let's make these fins like a dark grayish color like here. And then tab out, and you got that dark gray color. Just to show you a little bit better, let's tab in, A, Let's get a little bit of red here. Do you see how the red has been applied? Because I let it sit on top of the red. Okay. Let's go back, back into it. Tab A. Let's rotate this and make it all red. Yeah, looks like it's all red. Let's choose this face and push L. Make sure that you're in face select mode because it's easier. And then you can see it's right here. It's all red. Let's make this black. So I'm going to hover over my UV, make it into like a grayish color. Let's go to the other side. L for loop select. And then hover over here, G, put it in the roughly the same spot. So now our red wing has that gray face there as well. Finally, for this tutorial, let's change the color of this bullet shape right here, this yellow bullet shape. So I'm going to select this bullet shape, minus that material from on shape, choose the material we made. So I'm going to scroll all the way down, UV livery. Okay, open up the UV editor, hover over here on the viewport, push tab to go into edit mode, A to select all, U to unwrap. Smart UV project, island margin, just a little bit, 0 0.01 would be good enough. Click OK. Scale everything, or G, scale everything down. Let's make it red color, R. There we go. So this is really quick and dirty uh, method of adding UV unwrapping to your model. There are ways to control it better, how the graphic overlays the car. 
It's called marking seams, but that's a more advanced technique. For the purposes of what you're trying to create today, this is just good enough. It's just about a lot of trial and error, playing with changing certain faces, colors, adding graphics to certain faces, and you can get some great effects. In the next video, I'm going to teach you how to apply PNG logos onto the surface of the car using some modifiers such as subdivision surface and shrink wrap. Let's bring those tires back while we were here. So I hope you were able to follow along with the video. Good luck in UV unwrapping graphics onto your 3D models in the future. Thanks for watching.